Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is, um, let's see, Thursday, and it is time for our daily devotion. So I want to invite you to come and join me for a couple of minutes as we spend a little bit of time in devotion together. It's a beautiful day. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful day. I was thinking about 12 different things at the moment. My apologies for that. But, uh, so it's great to have all of you. Uh, join If you join real quick, uh, leave a quick comment. Say hello, good morning. Would appreciate you doing that um, as you do. Uh, for those of you that watch later on, don't forget to also say hello. Leave a quick comment. Let me know that you stopped by as well. Would appreciate you doing that. Sorry, I've got a little bit of a... An itch on the side of my nose. You might hear a little bit of a hum in the background. That's the um, ice machine that's circulating cold water across my my knee at the moment. So I am sitting up, but I'll hop back in my other chair and put my leg back up after we're done with devotion time here. I want to say good morning. Hello, Linda. Hello, Barbara and Chris Mueller. Glad you're both here. Several other folks are online at the moment. According to good old Facebook on my phone, which hasn't told me who all is here yet, but glad to see all the rest of you too. We're going to be reading out of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. This section is titled, A Living Sacrifice to God. Romans chapter 12, Verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. says that five of you are here. Glad you all are here, friends. I see Linda and Barbara and Chris, but it doesn't tell me who else is here yet. Maybe if I, let's see, I'll pull my old laptop around over here for a moment. I'm going to sign out of this. I'm going to sign out of that. And I'm going to sign out of that. And I'm going to go to Facebook. And let's see what it says. Who all is here? There I am live. And that doesn't tell me either. Oh, well. Hi, Susan. Good morning to you. Hello, Uncle Bill. Good morning to you. Glad you are here as well. All right. I'm looking at my Facebook account, trying to figure out um, how I can see who all I need to change. Let's change accounts. Let's change over to the old St. John's page here. And it says that so far... Oh, hi, Paula. Good morning to you as well. Hi, Barbara Paddock. Good morning to you also. Glad you guys are all here. All right. So again, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Okay, so let's get started. Here's our prayer. Oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you have redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. All right. Okay, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. 
don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. For we are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophecy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So our devotion writer today is Mike C. Berto Bertoglio. Bertoglio, there we go, from Georgia. And his focus verse is verse 2, and it reads, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, which is good and acceptable and perfect. And that is the new Revised Standard Version updated edition, uh, is how that was translated. Okay, so here is Mike's devotion for today. His title is Too Perfect. As we left our hotel while on a recent trip, I noticed several plants in the lobby. They all looked healthy. One in particular, an orchid, had several beautiful blossoms. As I moved closer to the orchid, I reached out to touch a leaf, and the leaf felt stiff. Then I noticed the soil in the container was not real. Neither was the plant. Nearer to the door were two other plants I did not recognize, and they also had beautiful leaves, but no flowers. I reached out to touch a leaf, assuming it was fake. Then I noticed a brown spot at the end of another leaf. To my surprise, it was a real plant. The too perfect plant was not real. The plant with the blemish was the real one. The world expects us to have a perfect appearance, perfect skin, the ideal weight, perfect partners, and perfect children. Yet pursuing that kind of perfection does not always lead to abundant life. The Bible reminds us not to live according to the false pretenses of the world, where perfect looks are all too frequently emphasized. Rather, we are to focus on the internal gifts and graces and on the renewing of our minds. Jesus loved those with blemishes and those are on the margins of society. Likewise, we can learn to love ourselves even though we are imperfect. So the thought for the day is, I don't have to be perfect for God to love me. And isn't that just simply a truth about the society that we live in, right? Everything that we see on TV, you know, these are beautiful people that have had surgeries, they have uh, people that can help them do their workouts, that can keep them in, in peak physical shape and all of these different kinds of things. And, and we look at them and the magazines and all these kinds of things and we think, oh, if only I could look like that, right? And then you get people on Instagram and Facebook and social media and stuff like that. And, and they take all these filters and they use all these filters to make themselves look so glamorous and so handsome and all of this. And they look perfect. And, and you think, oh my gosh, if only I could be that perfect. And then we see people in our lives that are kind of the religious sect, uh, our church friends, our church family. And, and we think, oh my gosh, they're such a, a wonderful Christian. They're a a perfect Christian, you know, kind of thing. And, and we wonder, how can we be like them? And realistically, if you read uh, Romans chapter 12, if you were listening, not a one of the descriptions in Romans chapter 12 said, be like other people in the world. 
it was all be conformed to the image of Christ. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can discern what God's will is that is good and acceptable and perfect for us to find ourselves being transformed into the image of Christ. And that is, I think, maybe what should be our our ideal goal for our lives is to find ourselves journeying in such a way that we are becoming more and more like the one that we call our Lord and our Savior, that we become part of his body and that we find our way in which we serve and that we do so in a way that begins to help us understand that we are loved by God. And that despite the faults and the, and, and the imperfections that we have, which we all have, we know it, we all have our imperfections, right? They are mental, they are spiritual, they are physical imperfections. And despite those things, God still loves us greatly and wants us to serve in a meaningful way. And so how do we maybe break away from some of the, the trap of the world and how we're trying to conform to it and its, in, its false image of perfection so that we might find ourselves being perfected by Christ. Because John Wesley does have this idea of going on towards perfection, but for him it isn't worldly perfection, it is spiritual perfection. It is the idea of being able to love God fully with all of our heart, mind, soul, and being, and to be able to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That's Wesley's idea of going on towards perfection, right? And so that's perfection in Christ that we should journey towards. So I want you to think a little bit about what it is that you're, you're battling with, your imperfections that you want to try to make perfect according to the world's image. And then I want you to think about what it means for you to journey as someone who is trying to become more like Christ and to be one who becomes more perfect in your love for God and your love for your neighbor. You don't have to be perfect to be loved by God, but God's love can transform if we let it. So let's take a moment to pause and pray. Oh God, we ask that you help us love ourselves and to accept our blemishes, realizing they are simply signs of our humanity. And we pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who is our Savior. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here today. It's a joy to see so many of you. Glad you're all here. By the way, good morning, Jan. Glad you made it today. Hello, Diane. Glad you made it. Hi, Jessica. Glad you made it as well. want to remind you, if you would, please, if you watch this later on, leave a quick comment. Let me know that you were here. And if you are able and would like to, feel free to share this on your own Facebook page so maybe some of your family and your friends can watch our devotion time for today. Don't forget, friends, I am praying for you. I want to invite you to pray for me and to take a moment to pray for one another. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Stay cool as you can. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our devotion time. Thanks, everybody, for being here today.